Hey snipers, Foster here. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, I decided to make my third video. I'm going to be talking about Fibonacci retracement. That's why Mr. Fibonacci is here on the back of the screen. And uh, before I start, I would like to thank Rob Hutchins for uh, suggesting uh, I would make a video on this. I always wanted to look into Fibonacci, but never really got into it. And I figured, hey, it's going to be, uh, that's probably going to be interesting. So in this video, I'm going to be looking um, at three things. First of all, uh, who was Fibonacci and what did he find out? Second, how does Fibonacci and how does Fibonacci sequences, how how they occur in real life? And of course, then the next part and last part will be how to incorporate this in trading. So Fibonacci was a mathematician and he lived around 1200 in Pisa in Italy. I've been there once, very nice place. So known for the Tower of Pisa. Um, and he came up with a, uh, a sequence of numbers. Now, when we go back to school, or probably even preschool, because we already knew about this before, we probably went to school a little bit. Now we all know how to count, and this is what we use daily. We count 0, 1, 2, we constantly add, right? We constantly add one step to the next one. And that's how we, you know, have a constant factor here that creates the next number in, in line. So this is a you know our most common sequence. There are other sequences, like if you look at time, although time um, uses these numbers, but there's only 60 seconds in a minute and not a hundred. And there's only 24 hours in a day and not like 25 or a hundred or 20. So uh, time is based most likely on well not most likely it's based on the number six. So Fibonacci had his sequence, that's what we're talking about here in this video. <coughs> so at first, he had nothing, then we have something, and Fibonacci thought, well, the next number is not going to be 2, it's going to be uh, the total of these two combined. So this one plus this one is 1, because 0 and 1 actually is 1. So the next number would be 1 and 1, which would be 2 and so on. So 3 makes up, is made up out of 1 and 2. 5 is made up out of 2 and 3. So this entire sequence is the Fibonacci sequence. And you know, you and I have been in school, we probably didn't really look at this sequence, maybe, uh, I'm not sure. I know my school didn't show me this. And it's an awkward sequence because it's kind of like, you know, exponentials going on, go up. Um, However, if you look at the relationship between these, like let's say you go from 3 to 5, how much more is that? Well, we divide 5 by 3. And we can do this with all of these numbers. Okay? So this will all go to 1.6, and specifically to 1.618. So the ratio here is 61.8%, uh, right? 233 times 1.618 is 377, right? Is itself plus a factor. This is a factor, 618. Um, you don't have to go um, uh, look at the ratio it grows. You can also look at how it relates to the previous number. So you can say, how does 5 relate to 8? We go back, we go up. And then we go divide by 0. Um, what you see here, this is very important is this range will go to 0.618, right? That is 61.8%, this number right here. I'm gonna give it a little color. And these numbers uh, basically state that there's a relationship between all of these numbers as well, not just the way it grows or shrinks because you can go negative. Uh, there's also a constant that relates it, the, this one to the next one which is this number. So if you go to infinity and beyond, this ratio will still be in place. Of course, here with 0 and 1 and 1, you know, 0 divided by 1 is 0. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 2. So these three numbers, that's where it starts. And then the rest will just go to 0 0.6 something. And these numbers are also important um, in Fibonacci retracement, you'll see in a minute. Now, 
we can relate 8 to 21. Right? 8 divided by 21. There we go. This is going to be the next range. So the number related to not the next, but the one that comes after that one. Just like you can, uh, as you can see here, you have 3 to 34, but you can also relate 13 to 55. And so on. So these numbers are also numbers in Fibonacci retracement, and these are a constant, how all of these numbers relate to each other. So 38.2 and 23.61. And these green numbers are the numbers that are used in Fibonacci retracement. And these, this I will show you in a little bit. What I will also show you, try and get some coffee. is if you look at the sequence in these numbers, um, these numbers will actually show you something that we see all around us in life where we're not really aware of. So we're gonna go, here is little zero, and we're gonna start with one, right? So this little box is gonna be, it's, it's one by one. And the next number will be one again, right? Except for one and one together is gonna be two. So this is gonna be two by two. And then two and one is three. So here's gonna be three by three. There we go. And guess once what's gonna happen here? We're gonna have a five by five. And those who can count can say five and three is eight. See, three and five is eight. Eight is the next number. So this is gonna be the next square, the eight by eight. And what's interesting about this let me fill these up. Is that the surface of this square that I've just selected is 61.8% of the currently selected rectangle. Just like this square selected is 61.8% of this. And so there's a constant factor because this will just go on. If I select these, you can see down here, it's already 13. So it's just going to be a 13 by 13. I don't have a video wall to go all the way to infinity, and no screen could ever comprehend that. But this is how these numbers relate to each other, including uh, the, the, the factor of 6 to 1.8, which is by some people referred to as the golden number or phi, uh, P-H-I. Something else to segue into this, how do I recognize this? How does this correlate with real life? Um, if you draw a quarter of a circle in here, and a quarter in here, and a quarter in here, and a quarter in there, and a quarter in there, and a quarter in there, you'll end up with a spiral. There we go. This is the spiral of Fibonacci. And this will go all the way out to infinity, and it will all go inwards towards infinity again. Um, and this spiral correlates with a lot of things we have in, we've seen in, in nature. For instance, this uh, Nautilus shell. It's a perfect Fibonacci spiral. Um, the shape of an egg correlates to, it's not exactly, but correlates to these two Fibonacci spirals. The way that uh, vegetables like artichokes um, are made up or leaves of a flower, uh, the way it's built out is it correlates with this spiral. You see the bottom of a pine cone here. Uh, sunflower, you can draw these Fibonacci spirals in here. So it's kind of amazing how that works out. Uh, we have a surfer and the waves, the bottom of the wave crest and the top, they correlate with Fibonacci. Even if you look at the uh, spiraling arms of the galaxy, uh, they correlate with Fibonacci. And it's not always about the um, the spiraling uh, uh, arm that you can see right here. It's also about what I just showed you, is like the way these surfaces relate to each other, which to us, I guess unconsciously, makes us either appreciate or not appreciate a certain design. Wow, that's a nice building. And then you realize, hey, the architect used the 61.1%, used the 38.2, the 23.61. They use all of that in the design. And to us, I guess, as human beings, we, we like that. 
Um, now, how does this relate to trading? Well, first of all, well, actually, first of all, a little coffee. Second of all, there's not really proof that there's a relationship between Fibonacci and trading. However, there was, um, if, you, if you put in Fibonacci levels in here, you can actually see that, I guess, by coincidence, uh, those percentage levels that we've drawn out here are actually going to respond to resistance and support levels. So there's a correlation there as well. Okay, I opened uh, Ripple, one of our favorite coins, and so the third option here will allow you to select the FIP retracement, and I'm just going to put it right here. There we go. Oh. I think I made a little mistake here. And okay. So when you start adding your Fibonacci retracement, this is what you'll see. And you recognize the zero, half, and one as numbers in 23.6, 38.2, 61.8. Now the odd one out here is 78.6. You see, 78.6 got nothing to do with Fibonacci. However, if you take the square root of 6 to 1.8, you'll get that. So it is a way to split this big box up into two levels. And this is where it's going to get personal for most people, because not everybody likes all lines in here. There'll be people that say, well, the 78.6 is not real Fibonacci, so it's got to go. And then there were people who say, well, I do not like to see half because half responds to a support resistance level. However, usually it doesn't act like that. So we're going to get rid of it as well. Then some people will say, well, usually the 38.2 is the most important one and the 23.6 is not really that important. So they might remove that as well. So it's going to be really personal. I haven't personally found out what's going to be very uh, nice to, to use. I would probably at least use this. Maybe I would doubt this. I'm not sure yet. I'm just going to show them all. Um, and so, how does this work? Well, first of all, when you look at a, uh, a graph like this, let's just remove that one. What happens is, in trading, everything goes up and down, right? So there is volatility. And this is how Fibonacci is being used. Because Fibonacci, as Naim has said, and how uh, Naim's his mentor has told him, if you want to look at the future, you need to look at the past. So Fibonacci is a great example of something that learns from the past and gives you something for the future. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be adding a retracement. And the retracement is that we're going to start at the top, we're going to be at the bottom, and how are we going to go back to that previous top from here? That is what Fibonacci retracement is all about. And when you start drawing, you do not start drawing from the top of the candle, but the little part that sticks out right there to this part down here, right there. So this is our loss, you could say, right? And how are we going to go back? So if you click on the setup, Fibonacci, and you do the extended lines, there we go. You see the lines go into the future. But first of all, look at how we came to go here, how we got there. So we went down here, it kind of stopped on this level, then it break through downwards and it got up and then it broke through again. It went straight through the 618, straight through the 0.5, and it kind of bounced off here. Went back up here, slightly through the 61, and then it bounced off the 38, and it started to trade in between these two lines and then it dropped through all levels. Now, what happens here is that you kind of need to make a picture, you need kind of like a support, right, to put on a trade. You want to know that what you put in is like a support line. And as you can see here, it was kind of like, there's been a support here. Let's just put it in. I guess you could say that this would be a support line. I'm going to make that blue. So you do want to have a certain support so that you know we're not going to go down even more. Because if you go down more, that's fine. You just wait with your Fibonacci until it reaches support from which it can grow again. That's kind of important. And so here you can say, well, um, 
we're going to buy somewhere above the support, but we can say if we really drop down outside with Fibonacci and we're going to go down even more, you know, you can say you can set a stop loss here. Right? So this is where you want to sell if it really goes wrong. However, you want to buy somewhere. So once you trade in this level, you can say, well, it feels like there's support here. It's safe to buy here. So we're going to we're going to buy here. We're going to set a buy order there. And then you work your way out. You, as you can see here, there was a little resistance and it broke through. Isn't that amazing? This is a support resistance line, which is not really, but it is. If that's an awkward line, the awkward thing. That is Fibonacci, these numbers, these sequences, they come back in this trading. And so you break through. Now, usually what happens is around the 38th, there's going to be a form of resistance and it bounces off and then it breaks through. Now, the fact that it breaks through doesn't mean that it holds. As you can see here, we went down a little bit and then we had our support here on the 23.6 line. And now it's around this level. So to show you this on another one, and let's go to Monero. Monero was at a certain top right here. We're going to put in a Fibonacci. We're here at the top. And we corrected all the way down here. See, right down there. Okay. And there was a support level here, right here. I'll just put this in here. And from there, it's going to correct up. And it bounced off to 38. And this is something uh, that I've heard from other traders <coughs> is that usually there is a correction towards the 38, but then it bounces off back down. And if it then comes back up, it'll go through. Um, so it'll go through and as you can see here the 50 was a slight resistance but then it broke through and now there's resistance here at 0.68 so what you could have done you could have said hey if I break through the 38 if I buy if I let's say that is our support and we set a buy order here in green and you could have said well uh, when I break through 38 I want to sell right here and I'm going to sell. What am I going to sell? Uh, I'm going to sell 25%. Uh, you don't have to, but this is how you work work your way up through the resistance and support levels. You can say when I make it through uh, 50, usually 50 is not a big support level or resistance. It uh, tends to go through there, uh, but you can set your trades there. You can also say, well, I wanna, if I break through 61, I'm going to trade another 25%. And then when I go through this top level, I'm going to do the other 50. And this is when I take my profits. So I want to recap this in here. Because the other day, I saw Naeem do a live uh, stream where he was trading. And one of the indicators he had on is, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like he had the auto fib on. There we go. What does the auto fib do? Well, if we do a regular Fibonacci retracement in here and we have a top here and we have this bottom here right there wow. do you guys see what I see I just set these levels and these levels correspond with what the program uh, or this indicator that's been made by somebody auto fib um, it gives you automatically from a previous top to a previous bottom, what's going to be the next lines of uh, support resistance to go back to that top. And so this could be a way for you if you constantly want to have this auto fib on. It's like, where are we right now? And how is this related to previous um, tops and bottoms? So that's about it. Um, I think the question is for you as a trader, do you want to keep all these levels in here? Do we want to get rid of the 786 because it's not really a Fibonacci level? Do we want to get rid of half because it's not really support? Uh, although sometimes it seems to be seems to be a little bit here, support or, or resistance. And so you have to personalize this for yourself and you cannot use this in all situations. Um, but if you do, you can use it, you know, for your advantage. 
Well, I would like to close down this video with um, um, Discord. I'd like to um, tell you one more time, like Amin does every day, um, that we have a lot of resources on uh, Discord. One of them is actually the Helpful Reads. The Internet of Money is a great book. If you want to know more about um, how uh, blockchain technology uh, came to be and how you can, uh, can trade this, uh, there's other books down there as well. And of course, we have our other resources you can read. And we have our Trading 101 with all of the different um, patterns you can use to trade. And there is a video suggestion tab there's a whole bunch here, and people keep adding to that, and I'd like to every now and then the video. So this video was a little longer, maybe a little bit more intermediate, but I think beginners will uh, find this very useful as well. Uh, once again, Rob Hutchison, thank you very much for um, uh, suggesting this topic. And all I gotta say is, snipers out. <laughs>